Sup guys, Heeking here bringing you a preview video today, discussion if you will, regarding Resident Evil 4 Remake. So, there's been a new, uh, how do I say this, 4chan leak? Yes, 4chan, our little friend 4chan. I know what you're thinking, it's BS, we shouldn't believe it, and you're completely right, we shouldn't. But that doesn't change the fact that it's interesting to discuss these things when they leak, because sometimes, very small chances, sometimes they are somewhat legit. So I'm going to go through this, for this post that we have here, and we're going to discuss each point of this. Now, the first thing I'm going to say, of course, is like and subscribe, please. Comment, share down below, etc, etc, you know, the usual stuff. And I'm also going to say that the, the info here honestly sounds a lot like, at least half of it sounds like stuff I've said in the past about how I would want the uh, remake to be and stuff I've posted online and that, uh, again, explaining how I would change it up. So either this person had the same idea as me or, or someone's been watching too many of my videos and thought, hey, this, this is awesome, let's put this, and they added some of their own stuff to it as well. Uh, or Capcom really does uh, look at the survey questionnaires that they post after each game. And then, you know, they saw mine and they're like, oh, yeah, let's, let's use these ideas. I will work for a remake for RE4. <laughs> if, if the game ends up being everything I expected or want it to be, then you, you have me to thank for that. So in other, way, in other words, if it's not a proper faithful adaptation, I, I'm the reason why it's bad, <laughs> okay? <laughs> no, but seriously, let's, let, 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 let's just look at this and, and see how much of it is legit or feels legit and, you know, why it's good or why it's bad. So... Uh, number one, it's third-person survival horror with more action segments like RE3 Remake. Okay, so first off, um, I got a bit confused when I first read this part because it, it almost came across as, well, duh, obviously it's it's going to be uh, survival horror with action segments like RE3, but then I realized, now hold on a second, this is saying it's it's survival horror first. Keep in mind, right, uh, Resident Evil 4 is, is typically known or referred to as a survival action game. It's not a horror game, it's a survival action game, or an action game for the most part with horror elements here and there thrown in. But this is saying that it's a full-on survival horror with action segment similar to RE3 Remake. Now, RE3 Remake, for the most part, it does have some horror elements, but it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mix between action and horror, really, when it comes to RE3 Remake. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't have that sort of element to it that the original game had where you had that sort of choice of Flight or fight. Do you know what I mean? But uh, the idea of Resident Evil 4 remake being more horror focused with action in it at some parts is Would be a step in the right direction because I would really like to have uh, a version of RE4 that leans more on the creepy side of things than oh, yeah Let's just shoot and kill everything and then move on to the next area uh, Next part Lewis has more plot relevance and he'll get a full character reworked like Carlos in RE3 Remake. Okay, first off, um, does this does that part sound legit? I think it does for the most part because uh, looking at RE4, you can kind of see what characters they could expand on and change about. But this also comes with a cost because you look at both remakes that we've had, uh, RE2 and RE3, and they've taken characters... Uh, that had small roles in the game and opt it and characters who had smaller roles and sort of kept it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, uh, uh, look at Marvin in RE2 Remake. He's got more of an expanded role than he did in the original game, sort of starting off like the tutorial or helper in the beginning. But then someone like Ben uh, Brutalocci, for example, who had like two, two scenes in uh, sequences in the original RE2 and he has one scene in the game and he gets killed off very, very quick. So they don't really expand on his character at all. And Annette, for example, is a bit more expanded on from being this obsessed person trying to stop everyone from getting the G-Virus to trying to destroy it. Uh, and then something like uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake where you had Tyrell whose role was made more bigger uh, versus like Murphy Seiko who you thought would get an expansion but doesn't. Along with Mikhail, for example, who had, who had, some, who had one or two extra scenes in the original game whose role is sort of reduced a bit and he's made less badass if that makes sense so it's a 50 50 here in terms of certain characters maybe they're going to get bigger roles and certain characters aren't but uh, i could see them making lewis a bit more cooler or a bit more important if that makes sense 
uh, Ashley has a new design with college student vibe. Her classic one is a bonus. Again, obvious, each character in every remake so far that we've gotten with two and three, they've had reworked costumes and looks. So yeah, this is this is nothing new. This isn't really telling us anything new. And, and her outfit is a bonus, is a bonus unlockable. Yeah, obviously, like, duh, it's obvious. Ashley got a character development arc where she begins as a helpless girl and becomes more confident. Helps Leon unlocking doors and even helps him fight by distracting enemies. Okay, that's definitely one of the things that I suggested they should do with the remake. Uh, which, yeah, it sounds like they would do that. Like, I don't think anyone in this day and age would like or appreciate how Ashley has done. Uh, so, you know, the woke crowd would probably lose their crap. So it makes sense that they would try and change her character up a bit to make her more confident. Uh, personally, I'm hoping she acts sort of like Moira at the beginning, where she can melee attack enemies maybe, and then by the end she can use a handgun perhaps, because it just doesn't make sense that you wouldn't give her a weapon and use it, you know what I mean? So, hopefully it's something like that. Sort of like Leon protecting and teaching her perhaps as, as they go through uh, this nightmare. Uh, Sadler is more of a scientist now. Again, uh, I've never been a big fan of the OG story of RE4 and having Sadler, you know, this is another thing I even said, they should make Sadler a scientist type character, maybe make him ex-Umbrella employee or whatever so they can try and tie him to Umbrella as well, the previous three games, uh, to strengthen RE4's story a bit more to the original games instead of just feeling, making it feel like a side story, but yeah, changing Sadler up a bit to make him more of a scientist would... I could see them doing so again another thing I suggested so if this is legit then awesome great three bosses were cut one is a quick time event chase now so three bosses have been cut one of them is a quick time event um, how many bosses do we have in this game I mean let, let's go through this list right uh, first off depending on how you play the beginning part of RE4 you can encounter Ch uh, Chainsaw Maniac at the gate or you can trigger him when you enter the house, in which case, you know, Chainsaw Maniac, you either fight him once or twice during the village segment. Um, then you have, uh, obviously you encounter him, I think, a few more times after that. Uh, one time when you're leaving, what, the, uh, the area where you get the sniper rifle, I think, when you buy it from the merchant. Uh, but obviously he's like a mini boss, basically, but uh, still kind of counts. You've got the, the first the first major boss of that game would be Del Lago, you know, the, the giant salamander in the lake. Uh, then you've got El Giganto, then you've got, uh, I believe, let me see, uh, after El Giganto, what do you get? You get that choice, basically, between uh, going left or right, and one of the paths leads to another fight with El Giganto, or you can just run away from him, or you, you have a fight with the uh, Chainsaw Twin Sisters. Um, I could I could see them, them cutting that those two off. Uh, you have the boss fight with Mendes, and then when you get to the castle, you have... Uh, the blind guy with the wolf, you know, with the Wolverine claws that you fight once, and then another time in a cage, and then you get two more uh, before you encounter Salazar. Then you get you get dropped down into the uh, hall, uh, and then of course there's Vertigo. Is that it? is that his name? Uh, Salazar's bodyguard that chases you was like the one of the bosses, main bosses that you can escape from. Actually, you don't actually you don't have to fight him, and then you've got two El Giganto fights in a cave, and then it's the Salazar boss fight, obviously where he mutates, you know, blah blah blah. And then you get to the island, and then you get like uh, the mini mini gun uh, Gatling gun boss uh, uh, mini boss fight with that dude. Um, then there's it, and then Krauser, and then Sadler. So yeah, there's a, there's a good number of main boss fights and mini boss fights. But uh, in terms of which ones will cut, get cut, I'm assuming it's going to be the bosses that have multiple appearances in the game. So El Giganto, uh, Doctor Salvador, aka Chainsaw Maniac, and the and the blind guy with the claws. I imagine you only fight those kind of bosses only once instead of having them constantly appear. That said. I, I, I do think RE4 Remake will implement the stalker type enemy, uh, in which case, and this is this is something I said in another video previously, uh, each area, the village, uh, castle and island will have Pacific stalker type enemies. So Dr. Salvador will be the villager stalker, uh, Ver Vertigo, uh, Salazar's bodyguard will be the uh, uh, stalker for the castle section, and Krauser will be the stalker type enemy for the island section. So I think, I'm thinking that's what, how they're going to do it maybe. But in terms of what bosses could potentially get cut, 
yeah, like I said, it's just going to be the reoccurring enemies and you only fight them once and that. For example, man, you, you, you encounter Dr. Salvador multiple times in the village and then at a certain point in the game, he'll mutate, get bigger, and then maybe he'll use the double chainsaw uh, like, like he does in the Mercenaries mode. A Vertigo, same thing. Maybe he wears the robe at first and then when you get to his boss fight, he disrobes. And he's more animalistic, if you will. And again, say with Krauser, he's normal. And then when you get to his boss fight, he mutates into the, like the tyrant form with the claw, etc., etc. So I think that's how they're going to do it when it comes to the final version of the game. Uh, Village is a lot more tight now with more houses as well. Yeah, that's again something I think a lot of us would have suggested make the village area bigger, expand on it. So again, nothing new really here being told. Like it's it's an obvious thing, unless they pull an RE3 remake, in which case it's going to be shorter. Hopefully not. You know. Um, Separate Ways is in, as well as Mercenaries, Assignment Ada is cut as of now. Again, I think this was pretty much confirmed by the leak that we got from DC Darkless, or the guy who leaked DC Darkless's info, uh, where we had the concert of Wesker and him confirming that, oh yeah, assign uh, Separate Ways is in, so yeah. Mercenaries, it makes sense to include Mercenaries, it's, uh, you know, besides uh, RE, the original RE3, the Mercenaries mode that we ended up having in Resident Evil 4 is sort of like looked upon as the OG version, the one of, of a mercenaries mode that people actually enjoy and like, so, you know, fingers crossed they keep that. As for Simon Ada, I don't think anyone's gonna miss that because that was never really canon, so, you know, we really don't need that one. Uh, Krauser was reworked in terms of character and design entirely. Again, yeah, makes makes a lot more sense. Uh, personally, I like the idea that he starts off as an ally to Leon in the beginning of the game, and then and then when you get to a certain point, it's revealed that he's the one who kidnapped Ashley and he betrays you, and then when you get to the island, he starts stalking you and that, and becomes sort of like a, a main boss type enemy. Maybe even becomes the final boss as well, or maybe not. I don't know, we'll, we'll get to that point. Final boss is not Spider Sattler now. So yeah, this is something I even said. Uh, they sh uh, for for the for the remake, they should have Krauser either become the final boss, and you and Ada team up to fight him, and then she gets the sample and escapes. And this is after Krauser kills Sattler, by the way. He, he backstabs him, kills him, and reveals that he's working for Wesker, etc., etc. Or we we get what we got in the original game. Krauser gets taken out just before the Sattler boss fight. But then Sadler, you know, you f you think you think you've beaten Sadler, you think the game is over, but then surprise, surprise, Albert Wesker shows up. Right, guys, my camera cut off there. So as I was saying, either have Krauser be the final boss fight of the game, he kills Sadler, he takes the sample, and then you and Ada chase him down and beat him and kill him, and then Ada takes the sample and escapes, or obviously Krauser dies before the Sadler fight, you beat Sadler, but then Albert Wesker shows up himself because he knows Ada has betrayed him and then tries to take the sample himself and then that's the first time Leon and him meet and have a fight and obviously it ends with all three of them living and escaping the island and either Ada or Wesker, in this case I, I would say Wesker, getting the sample and leading to the events of RE5, uh, the whole Last Plagas thing and using it to create the uh, Magini and that in the, for with uh, Triso is it? So they could do something like that. I mean, that would be pretty amazing. It, it would be something similar to how they did a uh, Final Fantasy remake, uh, where they, or, you know, part one, where they had, they, where they kept building up to sort of Sephiroth, and then he ends up being sort of like the final boss in the, in that game. So that would be a kind of amazing thing to do. You know, you you think you you be in the game because obviously you played the original, but then no, Wesker shows up after a lot of hints and build up to him sort of being in the, being in there like observing things. You know, instead of him being behind the scenes now, like in a room, he's actually there at the village. And when he plays separate ways, he's more involved with Ada's campaign face to face instead of just like sitting there behind. The, again, the concept art that we got leaked kind of provides evidence that he is going to have a big part, like a bigger role in this game as a physical appearance than just being the man behind the camera, do you know what I mean? So I'm crossing my fingers we get some sort of Leon versus Wesker confrontation because those two have never met or fought in the series so th this will be the one time where they could do that and pull it off and it would be amazing, like, just, just think about that, Leon versus Wesker, like Albert Wesker, how cool would that be, right? So yeah, guys, uh, the camera just cut off there again. <laughs> I ran, I ran out of uh, timing and I ran out of battery. That's great. But yeah, I, I was talking about the. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty much it. That's pretty much everything that was on this leaked list. Uh, and at the end, the guy says, uh, "Twitter leaker is bullsh BSing fans." Capcom not happy about how he spreads false info about their products. Okay, so this guy is referring to Dusk Gollum, and we got a reply from Dusk Gollum after someone sent him this leak, uh, and uh, he replies with. 
I'm not just saying this because it's trying to call BS on me, but that leak is BS. There's at least one thing on there that anyone that knows anything on RE4 Remake could tell you is fake. Here's the thing. W what part of this list sounds like it's fake? Like, no, re really think about it. I'm looking at this list, and I, uh, the, the only thing I'm seeing here is, is that, yeah, I can see all of this potentially happening. In fact, it's things I've suggested, it's things that other people have suggested, more than likely that they're, they're probably going to be doing these changes or incorporating these changes in the actual remake. So him coming out and saying that this is fake, I mean, yeah, the, the actual leak itself is properly fake, but them properly doing these things, like in the actual game itself, yeah, I can see that happening. So I'm looking at this and I can't really think of anything, because like, think about it, look at the remake for RE2 and RE3 remake, right? Uh, they reworked entire areas, they changed the clothes and outfits of characters and their looks, um, they, 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 they had a sort of focus on the atmosphere and that, they cut bosses out from both games by the way, um, they, they, you know, it's, um, how does it say, how does it go? Quite frankly, this, this does sound somewhat legit, but it's obvious legitism if that makes sense, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking at this and it's like, well obviously, th these are the changes they're going to incorporate. But yeah, Dusk Golem himself, um, I'm 50-50 on the guy. I feel like sometimes he'll post things that are slightly right, just by the, just by the uh, hair of his, uh, head of his hair, like luckily he's just right on that. But majority of the time, when he posts certain info, it's just BS. Like, he's gotten a lot of things wrong in the past. He, I'm pretty sure he was the one that leaked a ton of stuff about RE2 Remake that ended up being completely false. Uh, sorry, I think it was for RE3 Remake. Uh, and uh, he got what, a, a few things right about RE8, mainly the, the title and that it was going to have like werewolves and Chris and Ethan coming back. But he was completely wrong regarding Alex Wesker coming back in that game and that. And, uh, you know, he talked about uh, RE Outrage and how it's supposed to be Revelations 3, but then now the, the, that leak came out where it was like, oh no, uh, Outrage was a multiplayer game, and now he's like, oh yeah, that, yeah, that, that sounds legit, yeah, it is a multiplayer game, but then there, there's still that single player that, that you know, do you know what I mean? He keeps uh, 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 backtracking when, he, when certain things are revealed or said, like, uh, he never comes across as knowing what he's actually talking about, and, and, and the way he just says things, it's like, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, so, yeah, I'm very, I'm very 50-50 on him. Like, half the time he's right, half the majority of the time he's not. So, yeah, him saying, oh, this is fake, like, like you can look at this leak and tell it's fake. I'm looking at this leak and I'm like, no, this sounds about right. Like, I could see them doing all of this. So, yeah, it's just, at, the, at this point, it almost sounds like he's sort of, like, annoyed or jealous that he's gotten that someone's beating him to the punch, really. But we'll see who's right in the end, do you know what I mean? Because here's the thing, as a leaker, right, you, you know all this info, but you're not saying, you're not telling people. It's like, you might as well tell people and then see how much of it, uh, you know, matches up with what's been leaked by other people, do you know what I mean? You just sort of like saying, oh yeah, this is BS. I know because, you know, I've got my first blah, blah, blah info. It's like that, you're not really telling or confirming anything, or anything to us, do you know what I mean? Like, for all we know, you're the one that's lying. Like, if you actually have info and you know something, you may you might as well bloody tell us. Um, Capcom not being happy because I can imagine they wouldn't be. Like, you know, it's it's Capcom. Like, they wouldn't be happy with you spreading info. But the fact is, they haven't tried stopping him or locking him down. So, and not to mention, this is a guy who who, who lies. You know, this is a guy who said he was done with leaking things and that he was going to quit, and then he came back a week or two later, like leaking stuff so again he he's the one who's full of bs really so you know he says something and then he does the complete opposite so yeah this is someone i wouldn't trust with anything legit unless it's verified by other sources but yeah that's the video for re4 remake uh, the leaks from 4chan and we'll see how legit this is in the coming months i'm assuming if this game is indeed going to come out next year and if it's the usual uh, early or middle release date that Capcom likes to go for, we should properly be hearing something maybe at Tokyo Game Show, maybe if we even get a Tokyo Game Show, or it'll be at a, play, a, state of, uh, a PlayStation state of play perhaps towards the end of the year in December perhaps, maybe the Game Awards. 
But yeah, if we're if we're uh, you know if we're waiting for actual legit info at this point, uh, we're not no we're not going to get that until much 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 later in the year. For now, as always, take this with a grain of salt. But yeah, a lot of this I could see being ending up being legit, like just just common sense really when you compare it to the other remakes that we've gotten in the series. But yeah, I hope you like that, and as always guys, remember to like and subscribe, whatever, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.